Here is another any news video. It's called Why Was Story of Wand and Sword is the best new anime this season? Hmm. Now, if this is your personal opinion that it's the best for you, I can't argue against that. But was Story of best anime of this season? I mean, at the end of the day, right, best is a subjective thing. Everyone has different opinions, but I love Wistoria, but I can't say that. I think that, like, Maki and Heroin, bro, I am glazing that show. I am glazing A1 pictures like crazy. But of all the animes that I've personally seen this season, like a new anime, Oshinoko doesn't really count as new. It's a sequel. I think it's amazing. Roche today is good until you realize people only care about the Yuki incest stuff. And I think Maki might actually be the best new anime. I'm not sure. But let's see what Mr. Anius has to say. Imagine a world where magic was everything. Now, imagine traversing that world without being able to use magic. Mashley. <laughs> Muscles of magic. Black Clover! Uh, what other anime is there? Every person looks down on you for being different, and at every mm. step of the way, you're always at a disadvantage. Kind of like your regular magic high school, except Onisama was never at a disadvantage. So, do you give up and accept the fact that you'll never belong amongst the mages, or Hell do no. you fight through all that and chase the dream that you've set out for yourself? That's right. Will never gave a shit about the bullying or the discrimination he faced. He only cares about, leave me alone, let me grind and get to Elfaria. This is the premise of Wistoria Wand and Sword, and while definitely something we've seen before in a number of similar mm -hmm. anime, Wistoria feels like the refined penultimate version of all of them. Hmm, really? I ain't gonna lie. Let's, let's get some hot takes, hold up. As if someone put together- Wait, wait, like wait. A number of Danmachi? I don't really have much to shit talk about. I think Danmachi is fantastic. Of similar Black Clover? I can't say because we haven't watched yet. Anime. This anime though, I truly think it fell off the moment it forgot what it was good for. The goofy comedic way in which MASH overcomes magic with muscles, but the moment that it kind of Gave away, just like in the beginning, early game of season one, it was so good, it was fresh. But then the moment that it just started to take itself too seriously, it became another fucking generic battle shonen that's not unique, and it's just mid. That's how I feel about season two. The fights are pretty hype, but the more I thought about it, it's like, I think that MASH lost interest because like people cared about that stuff in the initial part of season one, where it's all about the goofy nature of him overcoming stuff. And it's not that he doesn't overcome his challenges later on with just pure muscles, but something about that early moment of magic, not magic in the sense of magic, but the show, the magic of the show, like a special interest of it being quirky and unique was just lost in translation as it turned into another mid battle shonen. But even if, if Wistoria is doing nothing special, it's fine. Because the tropes, the cliches, they exist because they're popular. And if you execute these reused themes in a really good way, that's all that matters. I don't need a clever new show to be thought-provoking. Just execute on the pre-existing principles and give me a good show. Storia feels like the refined penultimate version of all of them. It's as if someone put together the Avengers of underdog anime. Mm. The story was written by the creator of Danmachi, the anime directed by the director of Black Clover, the animation and art by numerous skilled veterans from all sorts of so notable good, anime, bro. then the music is by the same man responsible for the bangers of My Hero and Haikyuu. Let's go, now, Colette! I promise I'm not the only one who thinks this too, since the producer himself has gone on record to say that this could very well be the greatest step ever assembled for an anime. Meaning, this is One Punch Man Season 1, and Season 2 is... oh boy. <laughs> A passion project by creating the Avengers, like having like staff, just everyone come together to put a passion project in, and then the stark contrast in the sequel in season two. Oh no. Anime. Personally, I don't think I'm qualified to judge whether that's true or not, but what I can say is that the end result is amazing. Wistoria takes what's generally a cliche premise and turns it into a genuinely entertaining and yes. captivating experience. Remember, just because it's a cliche doesn't mean it's bad. It's all about the execution of said cliche that determines if it's good or bad. It knows what it is and commits to it 100%. So, while yes, that does mean that the plot stays relatively basic, there's a certain beauty behind the simplicity of it all. <laughs> yeah, the beauty is this girl. It may not be this layered story with numerous themes and complex characters, but of what it is trying to portray, 
it executes it perfectly. Yeah, keep it simple, keep it concise. And all you have to do is just keep being better at the things that you're good at. Don't try to do too many things. Just hone in on the simple things and execute it. Refine it. From the animation and world building to the choreography and music, there's a clear passion in Wistoria that you just don't see in other anime. I see it in Maki and Heroin. A1 Pictures. Oh my god, I can't believe I've become an A1 Pictures fucking zealot. But like, they're not even paying me. And I just keep glazing. Because the product is that good. It's word of mouth advertisement. I cannot deny that what they do compared to the other studios, it's a stark contrast. The talent there is on another level compared to the fucking people making Tower of God Season 2. A passion that clearly resonated with me and I hope to be able to convey to you. So, what is Wistoria Wand and Sword? Well, think dungeon crawling similar to Danmachi, mm -hmm. a discriminatory magic academy setting like Mashal, then a magically incapable protagonist like Asta. The perfect storm, bro. Everyone shits on you, you're the underdog, and you can't do that one thing that everyone prides themselves into doing. But it turns out, you have that one special thing that somehow is even more OP than everything else. And then the power fantasy, ooh. Combine this with events and tests similar to the irregular at Magic High School and an overall vibe reminiscent of My Hero Academia and what you get is a very basic picture of Wistoria. I'm not saying that those anime define what Wistoria is, but at the very least it's something to compare it to. Yeah? To make that picture more clear though, this right here is Will. An aspiring student at Regarden Magical Academy who, as you may have guessed, can't use magic. <gasps> Why does he attend the school for mages then? Well, that's because of his childhood Elfie. friend, Elfaria. You see, long ago the two made a promise to see the sunset together. They would work hard to become what's known as Magia Vander, ascend the tower as the top is where those Magia Vander reside, then fulfill their promise and watch the sunset from the peak of the tower. The thing about becoming a Magia Vander, though, was that only the five strongest mages are allowed to do so. Is that true? I thought it was about... I, I, maybe there was a, a threshold cap, but I thought that they were scared because, shit, the Celestial Host is about to destroy this barrier. We need more strong students, but we, everyone is so mid. That's why the scouts were sent to figure out, yo, which like, new talent could be made into Magia Vendors for upcoming war? I didn't know there was like an actual cap of how many people could be. I thought it was all about having enough credits, right? The way that like Edward is kind of approaching. Or make your own origin magic, which no one can except Elfie. So either you prove your power by ascending the tower and reaching the top, or showcase it another way by creating a new type of magic not known to exist yet. That's right. Any person who ascends the tower is then a candidate to become a Magia Vander, but only five are ever holding the title as such. I see. Their actual responsibilities relate to the larger mystery encapsulating the world itself, but that's something I'll leave for you to find out on your own. For now, all you need to know is that this is the position Will is striving for. Now. The reason I only say Will is because Alfaria has already become a Magia Vander. Yeah, pretty much at the age of two, right? She'd exhibited talent unlike any other mage before her and left Will behind with nothing but these goggles and a motivation to catch up to the her. The promise goggles. Both are intent on fulfilling their promise, but one has a much more difficult path than the other. So in a world where talent for magic is valued over everything, how then does a talentless person like Will ascend? <laughs> Insert anti-magic combat. This brings us to that all-too-familiar concept of the dungeon, since it's here where those without talent can prove themselves. Yeah. You see, Regarden Academy runs off a credit system. Out of 12,000 credits that can be earned in total, 1,000 are needed to graduate from one year to the next, 6,000 are needed to graduate fully, and 7,200 are required if you want to advance to the next part of the tower. The Upper Institute, which is the next stage of Will's tower climb. I never really understood, like, the meaning of this tower is beyond everyone being Magia Vendor at the top, but I guess after we graduate, then we actually go into the tower, because, like, the lab- what about the dungeons, though? The dungeons- I get confused, I thought we're going lower. Most recent episode, it was the Praxis shit. Tenth floor, tenth dungeon. That's going up? 10th floor? I thought we are going down. That's why I'm like, hold on, hold on. It's like, what the, what the hell is going on here? 
If Will wants to make it there, then he first needs to gather 7200 credits. The thing is, earning those credits are easier said than done since the ways one can earn them are broken down into three main curriculum. There's writing that's worth a total of 3600, practical training worth another th the dungeon is below the tower, right? Okay, so I'm not wrong, right? So, like, we've never entered the tower, right? The tower is different than dungeon, right? Because, like, in Danmachi as well, it's kind of, like, weird how we're descending, but we're going up. I don't know. It, it's weird. It, I'm like, ugh, I never really completely understood that in Danmachi either. 3,600, then spellwork itself worth the most at 4,800. Since spellwork isn't something that Will can do, though, that's 4,800 credits off the table automatically for him. Wah, wah. It means if he wants to make it to the upper institute and keep Dungeon his promise, time. he needs to be perfect in both writing and training. Luckily for him, writing is just a simple matter of studying, while the practical training is something he's actually quite good at. Yep. It's the process of killing monsters down in the dungeon. Every time he eliminates one, that's a few more credits added to his record. It brings us to the very aspect that makes Will shine, since where he lacks in magic, he more than makes up for in everything else. And that practical experience is probably way more important than anything else, and you can see that like Will is so comfortable in the dungeons, while like super all-star members like Wignall are so terrified of what's going on. And makes up for in everything else. Whether it be strength, agility, sword player tactics, when it comes to the battlefield, Will is an absolute monster. He possesses superhuman strength no mage comes even close to, the durability of a dwarf with his sturdy, rugged body, sword slashes faster than even lightning, and insight into battle that lets him understand an enemy after seeing their movements once. Well, this is kind of... This is different though, right? Because this has to do with Elfie's origin magic, but yeah, he, he, he is very knowledgeable. ...enemy after seeing their movements once. This, of course, didn't come without incredible amounts of training, but when you put it all together, he's honestly this weird combination of Bell, Deku, Asta, and Mash. Okay. Deku because of his notepad and childhood rivalry. Yeah, Will even has his own light version of Bakugo. In any case, this makes every fight with him a total spectacle since the abilities he puts on display are truly amazing. Especially when they're used to show up those who underestimate him, of which I can assure you there is plenty of. This is actually the number one problem Will faces in the academy, since as a sword-swinging brute Laggard. in a world of elegant mages, the discrimination he faces is endless. Yeah, and it's thanks to the discrimination the power fantasy can happen. If people don't look down on us, if people aren't shitty, then we can't have the power fantasy template. Yes, it is a bit cliche, but like I said in the beginning, the way it's done is better than most. Yeah. What I mean is that, rather than have the bullying be this minor element creating some form of superficial adversity, the bullying here fuels Will's growth both internally and externally. It's a core plot device significantly strengthening the development of him and the characters around him. It's never just for the sake of making Will the underdog, but instead usually goes beyond that. Yeah, it, it is kind of interesting how the like the underdog story sometimes there's just people are just looked down on by random people and then for for an excuse to have a hype moment. But in this show, the people that do look down on us, they seem to actually have corrections and they become like i don't want to spoil but like these bullies they're integral to the story later on now the way it's done is also quite extreme too since the man has been non-stop bullied for six years straight like there's even teachers that yeah the teachers are also having beef with the kid bro constantly try to make a fool of him the way he continues forward focusing solely on his goal though not only highlights who will isn't the determination of his character but it also makes every time he succeeds that much more satisfying. His struggles are by no means very complex, but I believe the simplicity of it all makes them that much easier to get behind. So, all in all, this is a story about Will, and it's the portrayal of him as he pushes past the societal limitations imposed on him. It's a story of perseverance, resilience, and tenacity. One that follows an admittedly simple goal of keeping a promise, yet builds around said goal with finesse and polish. All that is further refined through the overall presentation of the anime, which is by far the strongest part of Wistoria. At first I couldn't pinpoint why watching Wistoria felt so different, but then I realized it's it felt candy. like I was watching a movie. Everything from the tone, pacing, and music, all the way to the shot direction, sound work, and animation, carry with them this refined style you'd usually only ever find in an anime movie. Power of God could never. 
Like, a great attention to detail was put into bringing the setting to life, so whether outside by the windy corridors of the Academy's garden or inside within the massive open area of the spell hall, the atmosphere, background, and sound design match perfectly. It's clear they were all meticulously crafted to engross the viewer as best as possible. So, here footsteps echo as tensions built between Will and his teacher, while the flowing sounds of wind set the tone for the conversation Will and Colette are about to have here. In fact, <laughs> I guess I'm too much of a monkey to realize these small little details, but yeah, for sure, right? Edward's footsteps in the empty hall kind of makes this like grand anxiety as the battle's about to start, the wind, I don't know, shit like this I never really like thought about, but true, glaze. With a single sentence, three small cuts, and that natural background noise, all at once we were shown the grand nature of the tower, Will's admiration for it, then a hint towards the person waiting for him at the top the of the promise goggles. To me, this was a true application of that whole show don't tell attitude, and that's something that makes the most out of the fact that this is an anime. So, over and over, I was blown away by just how well some of the smaller scenes were executed. It's a level of quality that, for the most part, remains consistent throughout. That being the case, even if you are turned off by the simplistic nature of the story itself, at the very least, you should be able to appreciate the cinematic direction of it all. Yeah, and you would think that a lot more people would enjoy this because it's simple by nature. We've been recently just talking about how the average audience cannot stomach super complex dialogue and storytelling because their brains are too fried and they just want fan service and simple stories. But even beyond that, I've heard some complaints about people not wanting a story because it's so quote unquote generic in the sense that it's just a dude that can't use magic, but can use other stuff that can combat them, right? I have a personal bias against power fantasy tropes like this. I love that shit, but it seems like there's also just a lot of people who fucking despise shit like this. Especially when it comes to the fight scenes. This is the very juicy cherry on top, since in addition to all the detail put into just the regular scenes, even more so is added when it comes to the fights. Beautiful see, to watch. Rather than brief action sequences with flashy lights and invisible characters, Wistoria's fights are filled with fluid animation and stellar choreography. Yeah, and like every Sunday, because this is a Sunday slot. There's another anime called Tower of God, season one, God bless your soul, but season two, oh my god. The, the, it's just, the contrast. After we see Tower of God and then we go to Wistoria, it's like, what the hell, bro? It's just so jarring. I'm like, oh my god, things are actually moving. Things are actually dynamic. I could tell that people care about this show. It's a passion project. It's a labor of love, not just them just collecting a paycheck. It's... It's on another level. It's crazy how they're both animes, and they're both at the core. This 2D fucking JPEGs just moving, but this shit's this shit's actually moving. This is actually animation. I cannot say about Targa season two. There's amazing camera work. I would say is better than a Studio Gohan's trailer. Impactful. Oh, Studio Gohan's getting called out of nowhere. There's amazing camera work. I would say is better than <laughs> yeah. a Studio Gohan's trailer. Impactful hits and emotional stakes. Then, above all, a clever use of abilities that always makes it feel like Will worked for his victory. I mean, yes, he is pretty OP, but he when is. it comes to putting sword against wand, the way they balance the two is never too one-sided in either direction. Magic should, by all means, have the advantage, but with Will's strength, tactics, and innovative techniques, you're always wondering how it is he's gonna win next. It's a great way of making the fight more engaging. Plus, there's always that extra element of him showing up those who underestimate him, so if you're someone who likes that, then there's mm -hmm. really no reason for you not that's to watch me, this That's anime. me, that's me. Now, the world building isn't anything too complex, but the way it's told does make it interesting. Yeah, the history, the lore, the fact that the elves are also isekai characters along with the dwarves, the threat of the celestial host beyond the barrier, right? The existence of the tower, and we know what is at the top, but we don't really know anything about it because we're just in the dungeons. And then, like, the lower dungeons that we found, right, beyond floor 10, it's like Damachi Season 4 where it's just like the lower levels, and you're like, oh my god. It is simple, but still, the mystery is there. Something about Wistoria's storytelling just makes those simple topics all the more captivating. There is one big overarching mystery too, but at this point in the story it's not too prevalent. 
Really, the focus right now is on Will. Aside from that, there's the music by Yuki Hayashi, who you'll immediately recognize as the composer for OSTs from Haikyuu and My Hero Academia. Great soundtracks. They're actually extremely similar to the point that you might think that you're watching My Hero. This could be- That actually happens with me and uh, Isekai Shikaku because, uh, what's his name? Shit, his name is slipping out of my mind right now. The guy also did ReZero and Eminence and Shadow soundtrack. Kenichiro Suehiro, that's his name. Yeah, there's like these different melodies that plays in Isekai Shikaku that's so I'm like, oh, Eminence and Shadow! Be good or bad depending on your taste in music, but for me, I found it set the tone just fine. In any case, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to say about Wistoria. In a season where good fantasy has been pretty light, Wistoria steps in and fills that gap for us. True. It's a high-quality take on the talentless wanting to become the strongest trope, one that knows exactly what it is and delivers on all the elements that make it such. So, if you're looking for a good underdog fantasy with amazing direction, this is it, amazing man. animation, and music, then I can't recommend enough watching Wistoria. It's my number one recommendation to you this season. Alright. So, if you end up watching it because of this video, then come back and let me know what you thought about it. And I think that Wistoria, again, it's a very simple story, and it doesn't need to be complex. It knows exactly what it is, and it delivers on these simple concepts in a very polished and refined way. The animation, the soundtracks, the overall direction is fantastic. I love the whole power fantasy. And there's a little bit of mystery to kind of keep you grounded. So I think that, again, if you just want good anime, Wistoria is definitely a great watch. So far, at, at, at this rate, I'm not so sure that I could give this a minimum 8 out of 10 rating. But I think a show like this with this much quality should be minimum 7.5 and a lot of debate and argument to why it could be 8 point something. But for sure, you should check this channel out. Sorry, this anime out. And you should check Mr. Andy News' channel out. Please go give the video a like. Check out his channel. Here's the link if you haven't. And I'll see you next time.